Hi, my name is Cold Bear, and let's start with Dredge. Dredge is not just a fishing game, it's a fishing game with a twist. After dark it becomes a Lovecraftian fishing game. The world around you is teeming with creatures from the void and when the night sets in, our worlds collide and cosmic horrors enter our realm. Not as scary as your ex-mother-in-law, but still terrifying things. So ideally you want to return to a harbor before the night sets in, so you won't become a dinner for some malevolent demigod of the depths. You can also dock in some safe location and sleep during the night. Of course, it is easier said than done, because the game uses a very cool time management mechanic. If you do nothing, time doesn't move. Like for real, if you just swing on the waves and admire the horizon, you can stay like this forever. But when you start sailing, the timer starts ticking, and at 6pm Lovecraftian madness starts to settle in. This is a wonderful and honestly kinda relaxing game. Well, except when you go into mangroves, oh, it's not relaxing at all. Anyway, the game is absolutely 10 cold beers out of 10. A must play. Ghostwire Tokyo. Here the city is overrun by deadly supernatural forces after 99% of the population just vanished. So you will use a powerful arsenal of spectral abilities to fight the paranormal threat and unravel the mystery behind the mass disappearance. It may sound and look a bit like a horror game, but the main emphasis is not on the horror, rather on the fast-paced gameplay where you use your powerful abilities and can fight various ghosts like a true ghostbuster, or more like a ghost eliminator, because you kill them. How can you kill somebody who's already dead? Oh, shut up, it's not a science game. And seriously, the game has a rating that allows 12-year-olds to play, so grow your mental balls and dive in. Dishonored 1 and 2 in these now classic games, you are playing as an assassin who is given supernatural abilities by a mysterious entity. Dishonored is a stealth game, although you can play it as a brute force lover as well. You just have to be way better with controls, because fighting multiple enemies is a real challenge here, and only the best of us can dance around the danger like that. The real fun of Dishonored comes in combining all your powers with your weapons and finding your own way through a semi-open world environment. You probably already know the fact, but interesting thing is that the genre the genre of Dishonored is whale punk, a subgenre of steampunk, where most of the energy is gathered from the hunted whales and their fat. Not a safe place for your mama. Townscaper. What a beautiful game this is. Well, it's hard to call it a game, to be fair. There are no goals or gameplay, just plenty of building and plenty of beauty. That's it. As developers say, Townscaper is an experimental passion project, more of a toy than a game. Pick colors from the palette, plop down colored blocks of houses on the irregular grid, and watch Townscaper's underlying algorithm automatically turn those blocks into cute little houses, arches, stairways, bridges, and lush backyards. You can build your own cold beer town, cold beerville, or even whole called Beeristan and enjoy the amazing view. Game has overwhelmingly positive reviews and I can see why. Borderlands 3 you blast through weird worlds and enemies as one of four world hunters, the ultimate treasure-seeking badasses of the Borderlands, each with deep skill trees, abilities, and customization. So in this looter shooter RPG, you will play solo or join the battle with friends to take on an epic enemies, score loads of loot, and save your home from the most ruthless cult leaders in the galaxy. With bazillions of guns and gadgets, every fight is an opportunity to score new gear, and that gear is more than crazy. Firearms with self propelling bullet shields? Check. Rifles that spawn fire-spewing volcanoes? Obviously. Guns that grow legs and chase down enemies while cursing? Yeah. Got that too? On Steam, Borderlands 3 is an owner of very positive reviews, so it's a no-brainer if you like shoot and loot. Just grab the game and be happy. Make your enemies unhappy by making them die. Doom Eternal Definitely, this is one of the most entertaining first-person shooter games ever. Here, Hell's army has invaded Earth, and you must show those puny demons the way home. And by the way home, I mean you have to splash their intestines all over the place, walk in their blood and be as awesome as humanly possible. There are only a few games with such entertaining combat as Doom Eternal, but it also has a big flaw almost everybody hates. That is platforming. Yeah, here you occasionally have to jump over rivers of lava, climb walls and make precision leaps over and over again. That stuff is completely not cool when you play in the first person. I don't know why John Romero decided to ditch the Doom franchise and instead went and made Empire of Sin with only 49% of positive reviews on Steam, but I can feel with my butt that if he was in charge, the platforming part of Doom Eternal would be gone. Anyway, I do recommend the game, the price is fantastic. The Sonar Death of the Outsider 
Here you are a supernatural assassin with one important mission. You have to kill a godlike figure called the Outsider. As you can imagine, killing someone who is actually godlike is not an easy job even for a supernatural assassin. You'll have to journey deep into the underbelly of the city, where you will unravel some of the lost secrets. Along the way you will infiltrate underground fight clubs and black magic cults, and then retrieve... Yeah, the rest of the game's description is plain spoilers on Steam, avoid reading it. Anyway, as you hunt down the Outsider, you will face off against a new cast of enemies along the way. Armed with your weapons, gadgets and abilities, you will have to take down deadly foes by accepting contracts to find and eliminate optional targets throughout your mission. So you are an actual hitman here, well, hit woman more accurately, and the game has a very positive review score on Steam, so it's obviously not a bad game. The Red Strings Club. This is an indie cyberpunk narrative game about fate and happiness. Here you'll spend a significant amount of time bartending and impersonating people on the phone to take down a corporate conspiracy. Here one mighty altruistic corporation is on the verge of releasing a system that will eliminate depression, anger and fear from society. However, not everyone is happy about it. You think that all these actions are just mere brainwashing. And if you want to have depression and be angry about it, no Nobody will take it away from you. So here you will uncover a mysterious corporate program that promises a blissful existence while debating what happiness means and where are the limits of tampering with it. People on Steam are saying that this game makes you think about things. If you are not used to thinking, it may hurt a bit, but you will be alright, I promise. The game also has beautiful retro graphics and engaging characters, although some mechanics are weird and unusual. The game will take about 4 hours out of your boring life, and for this price, it's quite okay, I guess. Quern, Undying Thoughts this is a first-person puzzle adventure game inviting you on a journey to explore the beautiful land and solve many challenges. You'll put your IQ to the test with the increasingly complex puzzles and unravel the mysteries of the island. Remember Myst? So it's quite the same. It is original and solving one or another puzzle is really rewarding, you know, for your ego. People on Steam are saying that Koen is one of the best puzzle games they ever played. It also has more than 90% of positive reviews and the bad ones are mostly about technical issues. People don't realize that you should check your graphic card drivers all the time. For example, I couldn't even run Elden Ring without updating them. Anyway, this is a great game, really worth your money even when not on a sale. The Walking Dead, the Telltale Definitive series. I think most of us have watched or at least have heard about the TV series of The Walking Dead. It was a wonderful show for a few seasons. Then almost every at least a bit more interesting actor left the show, mostly because of the poor writing, but it still continued for like 30 more seasons. Well, I am exaggerating of course, and I have to admit that I stopped watching it way past the mark where it stopped being good. Where a hair model without any acting skills and a samurai girl without face expressions led the show. It was bad, but still addicting. Anyway, I'm telling you all this because this game is like TV show, but when it was actually good. Yeah, I know it's hard to remember those times, but Telltale's game is a masterpiece and this time I am not exaggerating. This version contains 23 unique episodes and more than 40 hours of content. It may not be the cheapest game, but if you want a story-rich interactive fiction with multiple endings, it would be hard to find a better deal than this. Moons of Madness this is a first-person, story-driven cosmic horror game. Here the scientific exploration of Mars meets the supernatural dread of Lovecraft. The story begins when the mysterious signal has been recorded coming from the Red Planet. Corporate scientists decided that it is of intelligent origins and started to build an outpost on Mars to investigate the nature of the message. And you are one of the maintenance workers on that station without any idea why it is being built. Well, the rest is kinda self-explanatory. Brown substance hits the fan and you will have to solve Solve the thing absolutely alone. Don't expect it to be a flawless game, it is not. It looks way better than it plays. But for this price, it's definitely a good choice if you like slow burning Lovecraftian horror titles. Strange Horticulture. Here you'll find and identify new plants, pet your cat, speak to a coven, or join a cult. Use your growing collection to influence the story and unravel dark mysteries. You are a citizen of a charming town surrounded by hag-infested forests and rugged mountains. You are the horticulturist, owner of a local plant store. As a cast of colorful customers come by your shop, you are quickly thrust into an occult mystery stretching back hundreds of years. Explore the lands beyond your store to find new plants, but be careful. 
The dark woods and lakes are not always friendly to a simple herbalist. You might discover powers beyond your wildest nightmares or lose your mind completely. Game has an overwhelmingly positive review score, it's a true masterpiece. If you like interesting, non-cliché stuff, it's a must-play for you. Black Sad this is a gloomy game set in a New York City of the 1950s in the world of anthropomorphic animals. You will play as Black Sad, a private detective, and will have to untangle the secrets of a mysterious disappearance. This sinister case will take you to the darkest, most dismal depths of New York where you will immerse yourself in a eerily dark adventure. Game is based on comic books, but if you don't know them, it's not a problem, it's probably even better to not have any untimely bias. People on Steam are saying that this is a very interesting game with a satisfying deduction mechanic, probably one of the best among other detective games. Although keep in mind that the game is short, it will take you about 9 hours to finish it. Wolfenstein Franchise I think I won't be lying when I say that on this sale every Wolfenstein game costs less than 10 euros or dollars. So yeah, in this alternative past, America is overrun with Nazis and only you can do the trick to make them all disappear, by leaving a bloody trail of their intestines and body fluids. And you are really good at this, a true master of the make a Nazi disappear magic trick. You have the guts, guns and desire to kill everybody in sight and spark the American revolution. Wolfenstein The New Order and The Old Blood has the best review scores among the modern Wolfenstein games, but I also liked Wolfenstein 2 The New Colossus, which gets way more criticism than those previous two titles. It's probably because I started to play modern Wolfenstein games from The New Colossus, and only then I tried New Order and Old Blood, so I don't know if that would be good advice, probably not, but if you never played any of them, you can do as I did to be able to enjoy all of them. Also if you like the idea of America being overrun with Nazi Germany, check out the TV series called The Man in the High Castle, it is a really great show. Pray. The game has a really cool story that has you playing as a scientist exploring a place infested by an alien life form. Yeah, I bet you heard that somewhere. If you dozen, hundred, million times. Despite that, aliens are really nice here. Well, by saying nice, I mean that they are the opposite of nice. You wouldn't want to chat with them about video games or best beer kinds in the universe or, you know, the best recipe for potato salad. No, they are terrifying creatures. Although, as I always say, not as terrifying as people who put pineapple in potato salad. Those are the worst. Just imagine this space station filled with them. Prey is a thriller, but that tiny change would make it one of the scariest horror games games ever. So anyway, Prey gives you a variety of weapons to use along with superpowers like telepathy or the ability to trick enemies by turning yourself into everyday items. Yeah, it may sound like nonsense, but it's not. You can truly acquire alien abilities and use them by stopping time or turning yourself into a bottle of beer and then you can roll around like crazy. N not suspicious at all. Well, this ability of turning yourself into a stuff could probably spice up the love life of you and your wife or imaginary girlfriend. I, I don't judge. but. First you have to defeat the space evil and escape from the space station alive, and with all the parts intact needed for, you know, spiciness. Factory Town this is a real treat for automation, base building and sandbox fans. You will create a giant factory using conveyor belts, trains, chutes, pipes and airships. You can sell your goods to nearby villagers to expand their borders, increase happiness and unlock better skills. As your earnings rise, you can research new technology to improve your supply chains and grow your civilization. There's no enemies or starvation to worry about, so you can enjoy a stress-free logistics challenge to maximize production and happiness. A perfect game for a calm evening with your mother-in-law. People on Steam are saying that this is a hybrid between Banished and Factorio, and everyone who had low expectations with the game were surprised with what they actually got. I especially like the one comment on Steam stating that the game is kinda chill but gets repetitive. He has 440 hours on record. I wish every game I ever played was this repetitive. Enter the Gungeon this is a bullet hell dungeon crawler following a band of misfits, seeking to shoot, loot, dodge roll and table flip their way by reaching the legendary treasure. The gun that can kill the past. Imagine if you had one, you could kill your stupid decision to become whatever you are right now and become a doctor of ding dongs instead. Be famous, have many fans, it, it's not too late you know, you can still change everything. Anyway, you will select your hero or team up in co-op and battle your way to the bottom of the gungeon, surviving a challenging an evolving series of levels filled with the dangerously adorable bosses. The score is overwhelmingly positive, so you can't go wrong with this one. Deep Rock Galactic 
This is a 1 to 4 plus first person shooter featuring badass space dwarfs and 100% destructible environments. Here you can play alone or work together with other players as a team to dig, explore and fight your way through a massive cave system filled with hordes of deadly enemies and valuable resources. Pick some powerful guns like flamethrowers, gatling guns, portable platform launchers and show those puny aliens who's the boss. Dwarfs may be small but they are really powerful. We in Lithuania have a saying. Neugis. Or smoogies. Meaning not the size, but the punch is what really matters. And your punch is really you know, probably weak in real world, but really impactful for the alien population in these dangerous caves. People on Steam are talking that there is no reason not to play this game, and I have to agree. Show those monsters the true meaning of extinction. Rock and stone, baby. The Evil Within 2. You will play as Detective Sebastian Castellanos who has lost everything. Well, that is written in the game's description, but I honestly hope that he didn't lose his ding-dong. You know, that would suck. So anyway, you were given a chance to save your daughter and have to descend into the nightmarish world. Horrifying threats emerge from every corner as the world twists and wraps around you. You can craft traps, sneak, run and hide or try to battle the horrors with limited ammo. Sounds familiar, right? Yep, if you are a fan of Resident Evil, the second part of The Evil Within will hit you straight into your feelings. It's a really great game with more than 90% of positive review score. Citizen Sleeper this is a serious game for serious people and it has above 90% of positive reviews, meaning that this is a great game, no matter how you look at it. Citizen Sleeper is a narrative RPG which takes you on Erland's Eye, a ruined space station that is home to thousands of people trying to survive on the edges of an interstellar capitalist society. You are a sleeper, a digitized human consciousness in an artificial body, owned by a corporation that wants you back. So literally, someone owns your ass and the rest of you, and amongst the unfamiliar and colorful inhabitants of the eye, you need to build friendships, earn your keep and navigate the factions of this strange metropolis if you hope to survive. The game is text-based, with multiple endings, beautiful drawings and sci-fi cyberpunk atmosphere. It's like a great book where you can actually tell the hero what he must do. Season – A Letter to the Future this is a beautiful open-world narrative visual novel where you play as a young woman from a secluded village exploring the world by bike for the first time. You will collect memories before a cataclysm washes everything away. The game will take you on a quest to discover a new world, one unknown yet familiar. You will document, photograph and record life as you find it, while you still can. Each recording tool captures a different layer. Sounds and music, art and architecture, the stories of characters living through pivotal moments. Your tools spill back these layers until you grasp the culture, history and ecology underneath everything. Game has more than 90% of positive reviews and could be great for you to take a rest from various hack and slash bloodshed infused titles and try something different instead. Thank you for watching, have a nice day and I'll see you next time. Bye!